Where do we go from here? Here to give us an inside view on the negotiations, Congressman Robert Pittenger, Republican from North Carolina. He serves on the House Committee on Financial Services, and he voted for this deal. Congressman, thanks for joining us. How did these funds for this dam okay. in Kentucky, how did they get attached, and does that concern you at all? Well, Jake, I wasn't part of that uh, negotiation process. I will say to you that perception-wise, it would be far better to go through the normal process of legislation. But really, the big issue on the table right now that should be of concern to every American is a $17 trillion debt and $60 trillion of unfunded liabilities. That weight has enormous implications for our future. If you were to talk to Peter Orzak, who was the budget writer for Mr. Obama for four years, or to Erskine Bowles, whom I've known for over 20 years, or Paul Ryan, they'll all tell you the same thing. Until we get our fiscal house in order and, and really redirect the trajectory of our spending, uh, we will end up collapsing like Greece. So let's, That's let's, what we need to be about. Let's, That's what we've got to focus on. Right. Let's talk about that. President Obama today said that he is ready to move on to some real issues. Let's play some of that sound. Passing a budget, immigration reform, farm bill. Those are three specific things that would make a huge difference in our economy right now. So let's talk about passing a budget. House and Senate Democrats and Republicans are going to meet to discuss the nation's finances. President Obama has said he wants a big deal to reduce the deficit and start chipping away at the national debt. He wants, he says he's, he's willing to include trimming social safety net programs or, or entitlements, but the Republicans need to be willing to raise some taxes. He says everybody needs to be in this together. Are you up for a deal like that? You know, I wrote a letter. I, I co-chair a, a bipartisan group called United Solutions of Freshmen. We wrote a letter to the president uh, right after we were sworn in, imploring the president to address the debt and imploring the president to go after entitlements, which are the single biggest factor. Uh, Medicare will be insolvent within a decade. Uh, Social Security needs to be addressed. These are very key components. And yes, I am totally in favor of, of taking real specific measures to address this so that we have a future for uh, the next generation. Uh, we cannot allow this type of uh, obligation to continue. Unfortunately, when the president has had the megaphone to the American people in his inauguration or his State of the Union, he didn't bring up the debt or the deficits. When we met with him as House Republicans, right. we met an hour and a half. When he walked in the room, we stood and we clapped because he's president of the United States. But in that hour and a half, Jake, he never brought up the debt, never brought the deficits till we did. He said, you know, I'm really not that concerned about deficits. Well, th that's got to change. So we need a clear understanding that we cannot spend three and a half trillion dollars and take in two and a half trillion dollars. That's why we had to raise the debt ceiling. So I, I, because we I, I hear you. To spend I, every year. I hear you and I agree with you. But I think President Obama, he makes two points about why increasing taxes need to be part of this. Uh, and I would be asking a Democrat the same question about trimming social safety net programs if I were interviewing one right now. But the sticking point for Republicans is increasing taxes. President Obama says, one, I can't ask for seniors to make sacrifices without asking the wealthiest Americans to do so as well. And then he says, two, politically, he can't ask Democrats to, in, in the House and the Senate to vote for something that trims these programs without asking for them to uh, asking Republicans to vote for something they don't want to do, which is raise taxes. Are you willing to enter into a deal hypothetically? I'm not I'm not saying commit to any one piece of legislation, but hypothetically, if there were cuts to some of these programs, would you be willing to contemplate, entertain the notion of tax increases? Jake, the president asked for and he received a six hundred billion dollar tax increase from the wealthiest of the American people. He got that at the beginning of this year. Uh, that was a major uh, concession and commitment uh, from realizing from many Republicans that that was a hard uh, bite to swallow because they, Republicans believe that lowering the tax burden, lowering regulations stimulates the economy. We're never going to get there, Jake, by uh, increasing the tax burden. You could double the corporate and marginal tax rates in this country, and you still would barely cover the current deficits. We've got to grow our economy. When Ronald Reagan lowered the tax burden and lowered the regulation in the early 80s, we were creating three or four or 500,000 jobs a month. One month, we created a million jobs. That's remarkable. 
We're sputtering along right now to 1.8% economic growth. Uh, we have unemployment at 7.45%. In reality, it's probably 13%. Mm -hmm. We consider the people that have quit looking for jobs. This is terrible. All right, Congressman. Uh, we've got to do better. We've got to grow our way out of this problem and create and generate revenue back to the federal treasury. I'm going to I'm going to take that as as a no. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Say hi to the beautiful Tar Heel State for me. Thank you. Great to be with you.